All right, guys. Welcome to Flavio Rihanna's MMA show. I'm your host, Flavio Rihanna, brought to you by Four Corner Sports. All right, guys. So, is UFC Vegas 40 possibly the worst fight night of the year? It is possible. It's possible. The reason why I say that is because, man, oh, man, the prelims were okay. The main card had its moments. But the main event was just flat out terrible. Now, it's very hard for me to say that I didn't really care to watch a fight or a fight night. Because I'm going to usually stand around and watch a fight night, you know, because I love, you know, mixed martial arts, you know. And those that are watching, you know, care about mixed martial arts. But when you have a main event that we had this past Saturday, it really makes me wonder. It's like, does, because look, I get it. The UFC wants to put out a fight night every single week, right? Maybe have one, maybe, maybe have about like four to five, you know, weeks off because you don't want to consistently put out a product and then you're going to have to consistently ask fighters to fight multiple times maybe burn them out or having to put out new fighters out there just to fill out a card okay we get that but this would have this should have been like a uh, a fight night that maybe they could have taken off possibly plug and play a, a little bit of these fighters into different cards and just take this week off entirely because what we have with aspen lad and normal dumont it just wasn't it it wasn't it, all right? The main event was a stinker. Aspen Ladd threw away rounds. I don't know if... And I really do apologize when I say this because, like, I don't know if she has anything going on in her personal life. But the fight itself was, was pretty trash, all right? And Norma Dumont ended up winning the fight. But, you know, yeah. She, she won the fight. 145 is very, very, you know, limited. What will we have? Like about four or five fighters in the featherweight division. Aspen Lamb moves up to weight because she has a hard time making 135. Understandable. Fine. Makes weight perfectly fine. All right. And I, I expected that. If she didn't make 145 perfectly fine, we would have a, a bunch of questions to be um, answered. Well, a bunch of questions to be asked, and we would have expected a, a whole bunch of answers. But the fact that, you know, Aspen Lamb threw rounds away really took away from the the fight night, because we had a decent, so of if not a very good, um, call main event with Carlos Felipe versus Andre Orlowski, and then we had Jim Miller knock out a pretty good prospect in Eric Gonzalez. Unfortunately, he did it in front of his family. Um, he knocked out Eric Gonzalez in front of his family, and you know, Eric Gonzalez had like the biggest pop of uh of the of the night when he was coming out to the to the apex. And his family was cheering him on. All right. I was unaware that his family was there. But when I saw that, I was like, wow, you know, he's in a fight, you know, a legend in Jim Miller. And let's see how this goes for him. Okay. So we had that. We had Mana Fioto, who I'm very high on. But I was a little disappointed that she wasn't able to knock out Myra Bonasova, who I understand is a very hard person to knock out. But, you know, I was making the comparison when I was watching the fight that she looked like. A mixture of Holly Holm and Caitlyn Chikagi. Not because Manny Fioto is blonde, but just because of the style of fighting that she has with the sidekick. And uh, she wasn't really displaying, in my opinion, you know, true punching power. Which that's what I feel I associate with Caitlyn Chikagi. But getting back to the main event. We had, you know, Aspen Lad. Is it possible to say that she po- she may have ruined her chances on getting a main event? You know, in the near future, like she might have to do something spectacular in her next fight in order to convince the USC brass that she is main event material because she had an excellent opportunity right here to go for the belt. You know, the 145 belt, it would have been her quickest and easiest path to 145. I mean, to a title shot was to fighting at 145, defeating Norma Dumont, who was the only person she had ever lost to was um, Megan Anderson. All right, and who's no longer with the promotion? If she would have, if she would have defeated Norma Dumont, which would have been a tall task, you know, let alone Lad would have been next in line because she was already ranked three in the world at bantamweight. Moving up to featherweight, you know, would have just right there, you know, said, "Hey, you know, Amanda, we got a bantamweight 
that's at featherweight right now, would you want to take the fight? If Amanda would have said yes, then they would have made the fight at 145 for Aspen Lad versus uh, what's it called, Amanda Nunes. And if Latin, if Aspen Lad would have won, then bam, we have a little bit of controversy over here. Amanda would have most likely had to um, fight for the belt again, and you know, go do the rematch. But Lad, you know, failed to do so. Dumont, you know, who didn't look spectacular, but that's not because of her own doing. It's because of the fact that it takes two people to fight. And with, when one person, you know, just doesn't want to fight the majority of the entire fight, it makes it hard for the other person to engage. And, you know, I put a lot of blame on Aspen Ladd when it comes to fighting. But I also feel like there have been maybe some personal things that came along with uh, her on fight week whether it's stuff that's behind the scenes in-house with her coaches with her um husband slash head coach or fiance whatever it, um lad you know just did not come to be prepared to fight and i really do follow the whole chill son and rule which is you know if you're not ready just don't show up don't waste people's time and i felt like that's what she ended up doing because I'm pretty sure the UFC would have looked so much better if they had Felipe versus Orlowski as the main event. All right, sure, it would have been a weird main event that would have looked a whole lot better as opposed to having you know what we had on Friday. I'm sorry, on Saturday. And it just makes me wonder. I was like, you know, what goes on when when we have these uh these these type of decisions during uh the matchmakings on Tuesday, which today is Tuesday. Now, Lad, you know what? You know who? Uh, who's next for Lad? In my opinion, maybe they need to rebook that Macy GS on fight. If not, m- maybe look at Arena Dono, who's looking for an opponent. She was supposed to fight Jermaine Durandamy uh, at Madison Square Garden. Unfortunately, that fight is t- is taken off the card because Durandamy is injured. Uh, which sucks because I I do like watching Arena Dono. Arena Donna did a uh, piece up uh, Yana Yana Quince- yeah Yana Kunensakaya on a uh, USC uh, 265 if I'm not mistaken or 264. It was the Conor McGregor versus uh, Dustin Poirier trilogy. So that's the last time we saw Arena Donna. So I think that would be a perfect matchup for Norma Dumont. I would love to see her still fight Holly Holm, and th- this is the reason why. She really, really didn't do much in that fight against Aspen Ladd. She just, she was the one that was just throwing more punches than Ladd. But I think that it would be ill-advised to give Dumont a title shot off of that performance. Although I would under, completely understand why the UFC would probably do that. Because Featherweight is very, very thin. Is maybe the thinnest division in all of MMA right now. And the UFC might have the thinnest, you know, featherweight division. So it makes sense because Amanda does not like to cut weight to 135. I know she's doing it for the UFC 269 card, her against Juliana Pena. I get that. I know why she's doing it because she hasn't defended her belt since UFC 245. So it's been two years. And, um, you know, if she could cut down to 145, she'll choose that every single day and twice on Sundays to do that over cutting out to 135. But yeah, so that's what I had to really talk about for USC Vegas 40. I mean, I really love what I saw from like Neat Landwehr versus uh versus him and Klein. That was a good fight. The Man of Fiotto versus Myra Bona Silva, that was a decent decently good fight. Jim Miller knocking out Eric Gonzalez in front of his family was pretty cold. But that was a good fight. That was he, he definitely deserved that uh that 50k bonus. I just wish that Jim Miller really changed his nickname. Well, what's his nickname like A110 or something like that? It's just weird. I was like, what does that mean? I mean, I know that mean that had mean made uh mean something for Jim Miller, but I don't know what that means. I mean, you got to give us something else. The Felipe versus Orlowski fight was good. Just a lad versus a Dumont fight it was just pretty, ugh, you know. Prelims were okay, but just they just dragged on. So I don't know, guys. Seriously, let me let me let me know what you guys think about. Was this the worst fight night of the year? And if there was something worse than this, 
please put in the comments, put the date, who was main eventing the fight, and we'll be able to have a conversation about that. But until then, I'm Flavo Rihanna. Thank you for tuning in to Flavo Rihanna's MMA show, and I'll see you guys next time. So then, please hit the like and subscribe button, guys, and I'll see you guys at a later date. Peace, and have a good one.